spinners are telling you, what they're telling about the real world is if you want to describe the state of, a, of an electron, you have to um, describe it. It's described by a spinner. So if you just look at a point, that state is described by these two complex numbers. So we call these spinners all have to be complex. So there's um, so there these there's this kind of two dimensional complex space of the spin degree of freedom at every point. Mm-hmm. Okay? So what 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 twist one way of saying what twister theory says is that twister theory says that really the way you should think about geometry is that um you should think of it as as a, a four complex dimensional space and. Uh, and with these two, the the with if you want to know what a point is, a point is is is, is a two complex dimensional subspace. So it's a if if you like thinking more in terms of real geometry, it's kind of a two dimensional plane inside inside a four dimensional space, except everything is complex. So so in twister theory, this the two dimensional plane is a point. If you if you want to know what is a point in space and time, well it's it's a two-dimensional plane in a four in this four-dimensional twister space. Gotcha. And the um, so one one of the beautiful things that that this does is that it makes, you know, in, in nor- our normal understanding of geometry, you know, what a, these spinners are very mysterious objects. You know, why are you taking square roots of vectors and what's going on here? And from the point of view of twister theory, it's completely tautological. If you are if you want to know if you ask the question why. What is this spinner degree of freedom space at a point? Twister theory tells you it is the point. The point is that two-dimensional complex plane. So the these kind of answers to you know why spinners and where do spinners come from becomes just tautological. It's just it it, it just uh, and but 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 the twister theory is a very very different way of thinking about space and time because you know points are these complex two-dimensional planes and. So it, it's a very the geometry is very different, and it's um anyway I, maybe that's <laughs> an, yeah. enough development of that for now. Just so I summarize that correctly, instead of imagining points in space time, now you're imagining those points as planes within a much higher four dimensional space. space yeah. And once you reimagine those points as those planes, it's created it's, it's an entirely new structures that you can now start working with and create some fantastic branch of mathematics that you can work with. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. It. It. it, it, it <laughs> You know, once you do this, I mean, all sorts of nice things happen. I mean, then, you know, there's, there, there's various symmetries of the situation become much, uh, much clearer. Anyway, the, you, you can use all sorts of methods. Everything is now a complex number. So you can use methods from complex analysis, which are very powerful to study things and, and just, just all sorts of kind of beautiful stuff happens. And, but, but this, this stuff was kind of, I mean, it was Penrose who first realized this, and then lots of people in the 70s and 80s worked out a lot of the details of this. 